would like to move on to our next speaker, Halma Gislason from Data Market. So Halma is a speaker in the conference on he's speaking on the Thursday and the topic of his talk will be data visualization where normal people fall in love with data. And we all know that one of the best ways of getting value out of the data and uh, into our brains is through viz. So Halma, I'd love you to speak now. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ed. So um, yeah, what uh, as you mentioned uh, uh, what I'm going to be, to be talking about is, is uh, this lesson that uh, we've learned. We started this company, Data Market, uh, about three years ago, uh, and uh, I believe one of the key lessons that we've learned uh, in that time is that data visualization is very much where normal people fall in love with uh, data. So uh, when we founded this company um, on an idea that we've been kind of uh, that we've been throwing around for for a while. Uh, the idea was uh, was quite simple. Uh, the uh, the, uh, the uh, and, and, and uh, addressing a pretty clear need. So uh, what we had noticed is that uh, numbers, in many ways, uh, many ways drive our world. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, it's uh, you know uh, it's uh, weird that uh, finding and understanding numerical data, finding good data, knowing where it's coming from, and kind of understanding it uh, to use in our business plans, decision making, or just to answer that burning uh, trivia question, can be surprisingly hard to to find and obtain. Uh, and the problems uh, we we all know, numerical data is scattered all over the place. It's on different websites in different file formats with different possibilities. Uh, you have PDFs, you have Excel sheets, you have web tables and proprietary systems online. Uh, and it ends up that people, uh, even managers and specialists all over the world, uh, are spending a lot of valuable time on, on the tedious work of, of cleaning up and manipulating data before they can even see if there's a trend or if the data is even what they were looking for. Uh, and this is true even of the data that you buy. If you kind of imagine uh, analyst reports or market research reports that you kind of, uh, you know, you, you buy and you pay often in the, uh, in the thousands of dollars uh, to kind of get that data, they can also be really hard to work with. You don't really know what's in there, don't necessarily know what data is in there before, after you've actually bought the report. Uh, and getting the data out of the report, if you want to work with it in Excel or, uh, and kind of work it into your models or your BI systems or you, uh, even just combine uh, things in Excel uh, to make a chart uh, with some of that secondary data combined with your internal data, this can uh, involve quite a lot of, of manual labor. So we set out to solve this problem, to kind of uh, address the needs of uh, those that uh, of, of both data providers uh, and data seekers by building uh, an active marketplace for quantitative data. You could kind of imagine almost an app store for for numbers. If you needed any numbers, you would come to this place, uh, and uh, as a data seeker and as a data provider, you would find this you know active place where you could actually put your put your data up for sale. Uh, and. Uh, uh, this was the, the uh, vision uh, when we started out three years ago, but you probably, men uh, you probably noticed uh, by now that I haven't even mentioned data visualization yet, um, and that was supposed to be the topic of the presentation, uh, and that is because data visualization was simply not a part of that original concept. Uh, that, that was not the problem we set out to solve. We were solving the hard problem of, of normalizing data, providing unified access to heterogeneous uh, data sources and allowing uh, numerical data to be sold and acquired, which we thought was kind of a task, uh, task enough or, or uh, task big enough in, in and of itself. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, luckily we were kind of smart enough and maybe bootstrapped enough to take on some con consultancy projects in parallel with our development from day one, uh, because it soon proved that there was a problem with with the uh, with uh, the kind of original concept. And nobody seemed to care. Uh, at least that, could, that was the takeaway. Uh, one of the takeaways that we kind of originally had. 
it was no matter how clever we felt about kind of obtaining relevant data for our customers from obscure data sources, something that we envisioned that the platform would later be able to take uh, care of, or how groundbreaking uh, kind of analysis we thought we'd made and kind of insights we'd given the customers. Uh, they, they weren't that kind of, they weren't that impressed. They were quite indifferent, indifferent to it in many ways. Uh, but if you draw them a pretty chart, even of kind of uh, obvious facts, uh, you're in business. Uh, that's where kind of that's where the spark comes in the eyes, and where people kind of where, uh, that's where the meeting kind of where everybody sits up in the chairs and starts starts listening. So it turned out that the problem wasn't um, in the quality of our data acquisition or analysis. It was all about presentation, uh, and we realized that we were we were onto something there. This, this may seem obvious to to you know anybody that's listening into this, but we uh, found that data visualization is really the way to bring numerical data to to the masses. Uh, it's a way to turn numbers into insights and understanding for a wider audience than the kind of data nerds and and people that are working with with data all the time. Uh, or simply put, as the uh, title of the of the presentation says. Data visualization is where normal people can fall in love with data and realize that there is something more uh, underneath and there is something in that data that can be uh, of value. And we've actually found that this has very often been the, uh, the, the almost the hook for us or the trigger for uh, doing deeper analysis or doing more uh, even non-visual uh, non projects and non-visual solutions for, for customers. But it's still uh, you kind of you hook them with with uh, a good visualization that gives them an insight that they haven't seen so far. Um, and uh, we've actually taken on numerous projects for both for customers and our, on our uh, own initiative uh, that kind of to, to that, that proves this point or kind of has has reinforced this point for us. Um, I'm just going to run quickly through through a few screenshots here. Uh, we took the demographic, you know, some demographic data that we could get from from uh, statistics offices uh, and turned them into animated uh, animated population pyramids. Uh, and it turns out that there are a lot of stories in in this data. Uh, in the early days, like back in the 1800s, uh, you you will find stories about child mortality and and uh, and kind of uh, yeah, a very different society from what we have today. Then you have the baby boom, and actually in this still frame we're seeing uh, well 1963, a little bit after the war. So you can actually see how uh, uh, you know how less uh, children were born during the war, and then the baby boom after the war. Uh, and we can see if we look at the animated uh, our population pyramid for different countries on, uh, of the world now, uh, we can see how, well, we can see upcoming things. We can see that it's um, only, well, fit after, after about 15 years, the baby boom, uh, the people born during the baby boom will, will start retiring, and that will probably change society quite a lot. We can also see the difference between most European countries where there are very small, young populations uh, and uh, uh, kind of bigger, older populations that are going into retirement, this will mean, uh, again, societal changes in, in the future. And this is not something that you see from the raw data. It's visualization, but the visualization kind of gives, you, gives this to you right away. Another example that we did uh, was that we uh, we're based in Iceland, uh, and uh, last year uh, you probably heard we had uh, a pretty big eruption when the uh, glacier Eyjafjallajökull or the volcano Eyjafjallajökull actually uh, blew up. And uh, we decided to take uh, some of the earthquake data that we could get from the Met Office. It's basically a live feed of, of earthquake data uh, um, and that, that you get in, in raw form and turn that into something very different, uh, into a data visualization that will show you uh, how the earthquakes were actually or the, actually shows quite accurately how the magma is moving because the earthquakes show how the magma is, is coming through the Earth's crust. Uh, and this data visualization made it to millions of uh, TV screens uh, on the National Geographic channel uh, once we had visualized it uh, in, in a documentary. Uh, so even obscure things like uh, the national budget that you would, uh, wouldn't think a lot of people are necessarily interested in. Uh, 
which is published in a format that looks like this by our government, uh, and uh, believe me, other governments don't necessarily do much better. Uh, we've done now for, for three years, we've uh, visualized this in a very different format, in an in interactive format where people can actually dig into the different ministries and the different spending accounts and so on. Uh, and we have uh, we have people eagerly waiting for kind of our representation of, of the uh, of the national budget when it's published in the in the autumn, uh, uh, which is quite a feat in itself because national budgets don't t turn, uh, don't tend to have large audiences. Uh, but one thing about this, and one thing that kind of we are very interested in, that all of these all, all the, these three examples, and actually uh, a lot of other great examples of data visualizations out there, are one-off projects created using static data sets. Uh, uh, and uh, again, that's true of a, a lot of well-known data visualizations out there. Some of the best work by the likes of the New York Times and the Guardian, the one-off projects that have only a short lifespan, maybe a couple of days where they go around in the social media circle and then they just lie dead and are barely ever, ever viewed again. Uh, even though many of them are actually made to shed light on statistics that are continuously updated, such as oil prices or gold prices, unemployment, inflation, uh, and, uh, and, and so on. And we uh, are, are very interested in kind of making more generic solutions that will allow uh, people that aren't necessarily uh, data scientists like like we claim to be, uh, but, uh, you know, more the general public where they can look up the data and kind of gain insights on their own. Uh, and, uh, you know, we were not going to uh, be a, a consultancy shop making one of data visualizations, even though we realized that that was a, a really important thing to do. So we set out to kind of integrate this idea into our, our marketplace uh, and create a more, far more generic data visualization solution uh, that uh, you can actually see uh, currently the current status of it on, on, on our website, datamarket.com. So what we've done there, just to kind of quickly tell you what's there, we've integrated data sources from dozens of the world's top data providers, uh, such as the UN, World Bank, uh, Eurostat, which is the statistical office uh, for uh, the European Union, and, uh, uh, and the IMF and, and other people. There are dozens of, of data providers already available there. Uh, and what this does is that because we read this all in, we normalize the data and make it kind of search, searchable there, it allows people to, to search, compare, download, and visualize uh, the latest data from these uh, great uh, data providers all in one place. Uh, and, uh, you know, this means that, you know, currently uh, users can quickly find and visualize facts such as uh, the rise of uh, the percentage of the Chile's population that is connected to urban wastewater, uh, such as the composition of uh, the U.S. electricity production, uh, such as uh, the fact that uh, the U.K.'s uh, 193 million air transport passengers in 2010 was the highest in any European country, uh, and kind of several other facts. Uh, so there's quite a lot of data in there, more than 100 million time series uh, at the moment uh, of, different, of different data from more than uh, 17,000 data sets spanning some 800 years. And what we're, what we're actually trying to do, uh, as I mentioned, is to, to create a more of a self-service uh, tool for data insights and, and story, data storytelling so that, uh, you know, people will uh, be able to find and understand the best available data out there, allowing people to, to kind of gain insights and discover uh, stories and actually share them too. Uh, now, as you can imagine, this uh, journey, uh, you know, just uh, going through this and, and making tools for the generic part uh, has, um, uh, has taught us um, some more lessons, and that's, it's actually these lessons that I hope to, to share with the audience at Strata. I'm not going to talk you know, too much about the exact things that we've done and, and the datamarket.com, but more the things that we've learned uh, and kind of the tips and tricks that, that we have there. So not only how we learned that data visualization is where people fall in love with uh, data, but also we've spent quite a lot of time studying the good, the bad, and, and the ugly in the world of data visualization. 
some of the most beautiful visualizations and actually some of the most uh, uh, famous data visualizations out there are, are terrible uh, and sometimes even misleading in kind of communicating the underlying data. Uh, at the other end of that spectrum, some of the people advocating best practices in data communication seem to be utterly unable to create uh, anything that looks that doesn't look horrible. So we'll share and discuss some examples of, of this and discuss the possibility of actually creating something that is both done right in terms of communicating the data and at the same time uh, looks beautiful, uh, which we believe can be done. Uh, and. Uh, Finally, we'll be talking about the technologies that we've chosen and, and why we've chosen them. Uh, we have a quite, uh, uh, we have quite a set of requirements when it comes to data visualization, and uh, it turned out there were very few packages, even though there are a lot of data visualization and charting packages out there. There wasn't um, any single one that kind of fulfilled all our needs, so we had to do some compromises and do some additional development of our own. And we'll share uh, share some of that and kind of how we how we were uh, able to address uh, a big audience with uh, with uh, a solution that we, where we still kind of could control the visualizations down to down to the uh, last bit. Um, and uh, a few tips and tricks that we believe we've uh, learned during these three years of um, well of the learning curve that it is to start the company. So uh, if you want to hear more about this, uh, you know, come to Strata. We look forward to seeing you there and, and sharing some more of our, our insights. Thank you so much, Alma. Really appreciate you sharing with us. We've got time for one question, and I think it speaks to what you were talking about uh, just before. You know. The idea of self-service and people being able to tell stories of the data is great, except it's so easy to tell either the wrong story or to tell, make data tell any story you actually want selectively. Um, how do you educate people you know, about basic statistics, about some of the things they need to know in order to tell uh, as best they can a truthful story with the data? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's the I don't remember whose quote it is, but if you, it, it goes like this: if you torture the data, it will it will confess in the end. Uh, you know, uh, and that's that's totally true. But there are a few things we're doing to to address this, and we're very much aware of this. First of all, we uh, even though we are working on allowing people to upload data at least for their own purposes, we uh, only work with data from trusted sources, and we make sure that you can always. Uh, you can always go from the data on our side to the original data as close to the source as utterly possible, and in many cases it will take you directly to the piece of data that you were you were looking at at the original site where you can look up the methodology and so on. But that's actually only half of it. The, the other half is actually understanding what you're seeing and, and knowing um, how to present it to best tell your story. Uh, and we are building in things like, we're already doing things like selecting or at least pointing you to uh, visualization types that make sense for your data. Uh, but we are also, we, we envision that we will, uh, we will be educating people more as they kind of draw, uh, draw the visualizations. Uh, we will be educating them that, you know, did you know that this type of visualization is best if you're communicating this or that type of data or if you want to tell this or, this or that story? So it, it almost becomes like a, a tutor on how to make, make uh, and create good visualizations on, on top of the data as well. I, that that makes a lot of sense. I think it's one of the power, one of the powerful things of uh, visualization is enabling people to get a feel for it, right? Uh, being able to see what happens in response, then taking a particular action gives them a sense for data that just staring at a static image can't do. So I, I would like to thank you very much for your presentation. You can catch uh, more of Halmar's what saying on the Thursday, the 22nd, as part of the the Strata conference.